Hello children, how are you? I'm thrilled to share God's word with you today as always and um, I hope you had a good week and I hope you're all happy to join us today. We have something interesting for you today, continuing with our series on love and why Jesus came. Before we go into the message, I want us to praise God first of all and right after we would share Bible lessons. So let's go for praise and worship. I'll see you right after that. Your love is kind. Hey, your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Hey, see your
Welcome back from Praise and Worship. I hope you had a good time praising God and showing Him how thankful you are for everything He has done for us. Now, before we start the body of the message proper, I want us to just pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share Bible lessons and we pray that you would explain your word to us, teach us your word by yourself, help us to understand your word and help us to apply your word to our everyday lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. So today we will talk about from the Last Supper to Jesus' arrest. You know, we've been following a, a series. If you have not been watching the, pre, um, the series, I would advise that you watch because for you to understand the whole message, you need to follow the entire series. So everything is on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch the previous ones so that you can make more meaning of today's lesson. So like I said before, we are going to talk about the last supper that Jesus had. Before we start, I want to tell you about the Passover. So the last supper, they had it during the Passover feast. Now, what is the Passover feast? So from the Old Testament days, they used to have a feast called the Passover feast. Every year, people would travel from different parts of the country, like some people do in, in wherever they are at certain times of the year. Everybody travels to, you know, maybe their place of origin to have for particular events. Some people travel at Easter, some people travel during Christmas season, you know, something like that. So they had an annual feast they used to have called the Passover. Now, what's the origin of the Passover feast? Do you remember the story of when the Israelites were in Egypt and God took them from Egypt, went through the, went to the, through the Red Sea, all of that. So before the, that time where they passed through the Red Sea, you know, God had shown different signs to the king at the time, to the Pharaoh, to say, you know, let my people go. I'm going to show you that I'm truly God. So one of the things that happened was that God killed the firstborn male child in every family. But before that happened, he told, he gave an instruction to the people of Israel to his children, he said everybody should kill a lamb and then put a, the blood, you know, the blood stain on the, 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 the on their front doors. He said because the angel, an angel is going to pass through the land and on every house where the angel sees the blood, the angel will pass over that house. Meaning that this house belongs to, this house belongs to somebody who is a child of God. So we're not going to kill anybody in this house. That was what happened. So from that time onward, they started celebrating the Passover feast. Now let's jump into the New Testament. Jesus being that he came and he used to follow all the customs and traditions of the land, he also observed the Passover. So this particular time, it was close to when he was going to be crucified. So as usual, they, they observed the Passover feast. They had it in somebody's house. And then whilst they were doing that, so it's called the Last Supper, by the way. And the reason why it's called the Last Supper is because that was the last meal Jesus had with the disciples before he was crucified. That's why we call it the Passover. Now, something significant happened during the, that last supper. Jesus shared the first communion with the disciples. It was from then on that he said, we should do this from time to time in remembrance of him and the sacrifice that he did for us. So now they were having the Passover and then they took the communion, you know how he took the bread and said, this represents my body that will be broken for you. Took wine and said, this represents my blood that will be shed for you. Do this in my remembrance as often as you do it, you know, that so. He had that feast with them and then he told them, he had been telling them before about things that were going to happen, how he was going to be crucified, how he was going to rise after a couple of days. You know, he had been telling them all of that. So during this last supper, he mentioned some things again that were going to happen. You know, and then they took the communion and then he talked about how he was going to be crucified, how somebody was going to betray him and how Peter was going to deny him. So I would like you to read the story on your own. I hope you read your Bible regularly, by the way. It's very important that you do for everybody, whether you're a child or an adult, it's important that we read the Bible all the time. 
God always speaks to us through his word. So I'd like you to read Matthew chapter 26 from verse 26 to verse 56. That is the entire story. Because of the length of it, I won't read it today, but I'd like you to write it down. Again, it's Matthew chapter 26 from verse 26 to verse 56. You would see the full story in that portion of the Bible. So after they had the supper, they went to the Mount of Olives. From the Mount of Olives, they went to the garden at Gethsemane. And then whilst they were there, Judas Iscariot took the people that were going to arrest him. He betrayed Jesus. He was the one that pointed out Jesus and said, oh, that is him. You can get him, you know. And then from there, we know the story of how Peter chopped off somebody's ear and Jesus said, no, 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 no. We're not going to do any of that. You know, and Jesus stuck the ear back. There are a lot of miracles in this story that I've asked you to read today. You know, I won't go into all that detail, but there are a few points I want to pull out. Number one, lesson, I call them lessons, not points. Three lessons, I don't want them to be too many so that you can remember them. There are three lessons I want to point out to you. The first one is that God knows the future. God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen in five years time, in 10 years time. He knows what you're going to be in future. God knows everything. And that's why it's important for us to let God guide us. If I'm going somewhere I haven't been before, I mean, there's no better person to lead me there than somebody who has been there before or who knows how to get to where I'm going, who knows where I'm going and who knows how to get there. So it's very important that we allow God to guide us. Simple, simple little prayers like I want to do something and I say, Lord, you know how this thing is going to end up. You know how you know how I should go about doing it to get the best results. Lord, guide me. These are simple prayers, but they're powerful prayers because it saves us from a lot of major mistakes. It saves us time and resources. So that's number one lesson. God knows the future, so we should allow God to guide us in everything that we do. Nothing is too simple that God cannot guide us on. You might be looking for something and you ask God to guide you. Something as simple as that, he listens to us. Yes, he does. The Bible lets us know that the Holy Spirit is here with us and he's interested in everything. I mean, if God knows the number of strands of hair we have on our heads and all over our bodies, that means God is interested in every, every detail, no matter how big or small we think it is. So let God guide you. That's number one lesson. Number two lesson is that the Holy Communion is important. I mean, you know when people are about to leave the earth, when people are about to transition or die, whichever way you want to put it, when somebody, if somebody knows that they are go about to die, whatever they do at that point, it means that thing is important. Because if somebody knows, oh, it's about time for me to leave the earth, the person is not going to spend time doing unimportant things. The person is going to engage in the things that are most important. So if Jesus, at that point, had the first communion with them it means that the holy communion is such an important practice for us so anytime you're told to take the communion don't take it lightly it's very important as we do that we remind ourselves of the sacrifice of jesus and that we are children of god and there are certain things that are not supposed to happen to us or around us so the holy communion is very important so whenever they call you oh, come and take the communion whether at home or at church take it seriously it's a very important practice in our Christian walk. The third lesson I wanted to is that we should always submit to God's will. So we know that if you read that story that I told you to read in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus left to him, he didn't want to die. He prayed severally to say, Lord, can this cup pass over me, please? Oh Lord, please, can I, do I really have to do this? You know, but then he said, well, it's not my will at the end of the day. Whatever you want, Lord, I trust you. Let your will be done. I say that because there are some times that we, we, we are faced with decisions and we know the right thing to do, but the right thing sometimes is not comfortable to do. For example, maybe you've done something wrong and then you know deep down inside of you or the Holy Spirit is telling you, nudging you to say, apologize to this person, you were wrong. But you know, a part of you just wants to fight it. I'll, I'll give you one simple ad piece of advice today you are always better off submitting to God's will. Whatever God says to do, do it. In the immediate, it may seem uncomfortable, but eventually you'll realize that God's will is the best for us. 
So in anything at all that you do, whatever you know is, is the way God wants you to go, whatever you know from the word of God that you're supposed to do or you're not supposed to do, I'll advise you submit to God's will. You will always get the best results when you do. So those are my three lessons for today. Before I leave you, uh, we, we have a memory verse that we have been taking. It's from Matthew chapter 28 from verse 6. I will read from the International Children's Bible Version. But he is not here. He has risen from death as he said he would. Come and see the place where his body was. I'll take that again. Matthew chapter 28 verse 6, our memory verse, it says, But he is not here. He has risen from death as he said he would. Come and see the place where his body was. A memory verse. And then for anybody here, if you're watching today and you're not a child of God yet, we talked about God guiding us. God guides his children. So if you're not a child of God yet, it's the prayer to become a child of God is very simple. It's nothing too big or nothing, too, nothing more than what you can do as a five to nine year old. So to quickly say this prayer after me, Father, I thank you for your message today. I acknowledge that I am not yet a child of God. I'm not born again. So Lord, I open up my heart to you today. I believe in my heart that God, Jesus is Lord and I confess with my mouth that he was raised from the dead and I want to become your child. Come into my heart today. Make me your child. Make me, I want you to become my Lord and my Savior. From today henceforth, I want to do your will. Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So yes, yeah, so next week we'll come with continuation of this Bible series. Please make sure you join us next week. And until then, keep being good children. And remember, let God guide you in all that you do. See you next week. Bye for now. Jesus hung on the cross Jesus is love has rescued me Jesus conquering king Jesus your power has delivered me Oh my guilty raised by your precious blood all my sins erased, now I'm white as snow. I have been set free by my Savior King. Jesus, your grace is all over me. Reason King, Jesus, your life now found in me. Come on. Jesus, light of the world. Jesus, your light now shines in me. Oh, my guilty raised by your precious blood. All my sins erased, now I'm white as snow. I have been set free by my Savior King. Jesus, your grace is all over me. All my guilty raised by your precious blood. My sins erased, now I'm white as snow. I have been set free by my Savior King. Jesus, your grace is all over me.
hope of the world, Jesus, my freedom is found in you. Come on, Jesus, hope of the world, Jesus, my freedom is found in you. All together now, all my sins erased by your precious blood. All my sins erased, now I'm white as snow. Precious blood, all my sins erased. Now I'm white as snow. I have been set free by my Savior King. Jesus, the grace is all of me. Jesus, your grace is all over me.